Well, my second son, it's a funny story because we was going through child support and I was keeping my son majority of the time. When we was going to court, she admitted to the court that I was keeping my son four days out the week. She was keeping him three days because she worked a lot. And at the time I was working, but I had relatives that was keeping my son while I was at work and then I'd be back home with my son. They ended up granting me child support. She was so mad. She was so red. Like the facial expression I seen was like priceless. It looked like her head was about to explode. She was mad about, I think it was like $45 a month or something. It was just something stupid. But it's nothing. Right, it's nothing. She felt my pain though. I still got that check on my refrigerator. I ain't even cash it just for the satisfaction. Things was different. It'd be so many women that are doing the same thing the real man is doing is trying to survive. Most women, they get their child support checks and they ain't uh, taking care of the kid with that money. You know, I hear a lot of stories, what well, daycare and all that stuff is expensive. Okay, I get all that. But why do I have to pay for daycare? Why do I have to, all by myself, why do I have to pay you all this money on child support when you're not even doing? I gotta survive too. I need a roof over my head too. I need a car to drive too. Unfortunately, let me say this with the price of pettiness, and I hope everybody who's watching really listens to what I'm saying. The pettiness comes with a price. I know certain people feel empowered by the pettiness act, but when you involve the courts into your situation, they have to get their cut too. It's a hustle. Yes, I have a child support case myself. I don't receive that much. I'm gonna get into that in a later date. However, when it comes to child support, whatever the amount is, the mother doesn't get that full amount. The courts take their part too. I understand. That's why it just doesn't make any sense. As adults, if we can't get along, if we can't make this work, then we need to come to the table and say, hey, you know what? We gave it all we got for whatever reason, it just didn't work. What can we figure out amongst ourselves and stick to that? Have that individual, y'all might type out a contract between the two and have that person sign it. So in the event that you have to go to court, you've got some documentation in order. It's just really unfortunate. And then the mothers know, some mothers do and some don't, that the more parenting time that the father gets, the less money they get. So mm. I would believe that has something to do with, well, let me not let him see his kid because that takes away what I'm going to get. And that's very unfortunate because at the end of the day, when it comes to children, it should be solely about the children. It shouldn't be about you. And especially now that this person has moved on, it should be smooth sailing. I can't even understand it previous to the new relationship and the new marriage. But if you're truly happy, let me see my kid. Right. So it seems like this man is not even realizing. This is just my opinion because I don't know this individual. I want to be clear. I don't, I don't like to bash anyone. And that's not what we're getting into here. But... The man is agreeing in his own detriment because what he's doing is co-signing her inability to let you go. Right. That's kind of crazy to me. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't gonna never change. The system know what they're doing. They put us against each other anyway. It's gonna continue to go on along. The more power that they give women in that field, it's a terrible thing for the black man or a man in general because you just can't survive. Why isn't it 50-50? If daycare costs 200, I put $100 towards it. Why do I have to pay for this woman's house note, car note, and everything else? And right. I'm sitting here right. homeless trying to find a place to stay. That don't make no sense to me. When I go to court and try and fight for visitation, then y'all want to say, well, y'all got a place to stay. Well, I can't afford a place to stay because y'all taking all my money. So basically, y'all leave me what to do dumb stuff to get some money to try and get me an apartment, to try and do all the right things to try and get my son. Then if I go to jail for that, then y'all want to criticize me for that too. It's a lose-lose situation. I hear the stories about the deadbeats too. Nine times out of ten, you knew he was a deadbeat before you even had a baby with him. He was probably just trying to force him to change. He probably had other kids that he wanted to see and you was trying to force him to change. And now you got a baby. I know that some people may not agree with this, what I'm about to say, but I think we got to start looking at the fact that some women look for projects instead of men. They assign, oh, this is someone that I can mold. Or if it's not even that, it's either the project mentality or it's the control mentality. If I make the money, I let him drive my car, I let him, then I have control. I ain't got to worry about him doing me wrong. But all of that is sucker shit. Really, it is. Mm -hmm. All of that is sucker shit. I don't agree with it. But they do it, though. You know, this this last couple, you know, 10 years or whatever, I've been going through all this. I done got with a woman to have a roof over my head, basically, and she had her motives. She wanted to control me to a certain point. I can't do this. I could do this. She let me drive her car. Like, I owe her something. 
but in reality, we both using each other. Right. And in your case, it's not like you are malicious. You gotta do what you gotta do to survive. And sometimes survival comes to, it looks malicious. Right. But it's not, right. it's survival. Right, survival mode. It's better that than going back to my old ways. Robbing people, stealing, shooting at people, getting shot at. It's better than doing all that. For me, survivor mode was basically I had to do what I had to do. I had to talk to a female, even though I know I don't like her, I don't see nothing. But at the end of the day, I had to eat. I had to have a place to stay. I had to survive. So it gets real frustrating. It gets real hard. But uh, the longer you do the right thing, things will start to turn around if you motivate it. But no one should have to work. It's like trying to run up a hill or a mountain rather is almost damn near impossible why should a person have to be tested and pushed to that point why should women allow themselves to be part of the government hustle if you have any so sense, they can go get that new remy <laughs> but all you know materialism, go get that new bands. that's true but that stuff is it's nothing you you can't take it with you it doesn't mean nothing it really doesn't it means absolutely nothing and as well, much as we all happens all the time it does. It happens all the time. You can't sit up and say, the government needs to do better. They need to get down on crime. I'm tired of people getting robbed, carjacked, murdered. You can't say that and in the same breath be a tool to keep this going because they're not going to crack down on crime because it's profitable. Right. They're not going to hack down on child support because it's another way to suppress the black man and keep the black family divided. Clear. And us as women, us as men, we have to understand that and be aware of things are bigger than us. It's bigger than your feelings. It's bigger than your pettiness. It's bigger than the bins you want to drive and the clothes you want to wear. It's so many more things more important than that. And we get so, we're humans, but we're perfectly made. We're brilliant and we don't use it. We don't use our intelligence. We don't use our brilliance. We result to pettiness and frivolousness. And it's really sad. So I got three kids now. I got fixed after my second son. I wanted a daughter. I had two sons at this time. I wanted a daughter, but I just couldn't afford it. So I ended up getting fixed. Well, six years down the road, get a Facebook message. We need to talk. I'm like, about what? I ain't seen you in a long time. Maybe you're trying to catch up or something. Okay, whatever. Kind of find out I got a daughter that's six. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise. But at the same time, I lost six years with my daughter. Found out about the blood test. Found out she mine. Got fucked again. Child support. <laughs> <laughs> Got stuck paying. Right off the bat, like $5,200 for the birth of my daughter that I just met at six years old. I think it was like almost $600 a month just for my daughter on top of my other two cases. So now I'm back up to $1,500. I had just got everything lowered with my first two kids. So I was able to breathe a little bit. My ex-wife, she finally went to the court and told them to lower my child support, only because she wanted me to give up my rights. But wouldn't that take the child support away then? Um, it wouldn't take back the back child support, but the future child support, it would. I lost six years with my daughter, got put on child support, paying an arm and a leg again. I had just started to get things rolling. Had got me a nice apartment, got me a nice car, everything on the up and up. Then I lost everything again. Had a good job, then I couldn't afford nothing again because of child support. It's messed up because I lost six years. Now you want all this money for child support. They don't penalize the woman for nothing. They didn't penalize her for not even telling me about my daughter for six years. You know, but I was happy because I had a daughter. Tried to work as much overtime as I could. Tried to work another job. But then I got sick. I was homeless. Sleeping in my car for a week and a half. My kidneys almost failed. Say I was overworking myself. Try and go to the gym to work out so I won't smack nobody because I'm stressed out. Go off on somebody or do something stupid again. Rob another Walmart or something. They threatened me with dialysis. They were talking about doing emergency dialysis on me because my kidney levels were so high. I told them no because I was just tired. But then my kidney levels came down, ended up getting out, got a job right off the gate. Then got another job right off the gate, even though I wasn't supposed to. I can't survive off $100 a week. So now I'm back to working 16, 17 hour days. Happened again, back in the hospital. Kidney levels up. Get out this time. Contemplated suicide, contemplated. There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Robbing banks, all type of stuff. 
because at that point I thought it, it'd be better for me in jail where I got a roof over my head, three square meals, I could watch TV, I could play cards, I could talk shit, and getting out here and hurting somebody, killing somebody, or getting killed myself. But then I end up catching a break, end up getting my license back squared away, end up going to school for truck driving school. So now I'm a truck driver. I make a little bit more money so I can survive. Even though I make a lot of money, I only get half of it until child support get lowered. If I make 50000 this year, I'm only going to bring home 25000 So that's like me still being on minimum wage. So in order for me to get ahead, I got to find a different job to pay more money. My son, Jarvon, recently moved to Dallas, Texas with his mom because her husband wanted to move to Dallas, Texas. Now, although she know what I've been going through, because I was going through it when I was with her for five, six years, about my oldest son, Jordan. Although she's married, it's just still a messed up situation because you married, I get it, and you want to move out the state, I get it. But I don't even know if you realize how much it meant or did you even care that you was taking your son away from his father, knowing that he going through other stuff with his other son. You know, he can't see his other son. So now I can't even see my other son when I want to. I got to figure out a way to get all the way to Dallas, Texas. And I know damn well she ain't going to pay for it to send him back up here. You know, so now that's another hurdle I got to come upon. I could have said no at the same time. I didn't want to stop her hustle, her dreams or whatnot. And also I wanted my son to not just be in Battle Creek or stuck in Battle Creek. I wanted him to to go see the world. But like I said, it's still a messed up situation because I'm still stuck paying all this money in child support. If I be like, okay, I want to see my son, I'm going to have to figure out a way to, to get my son up here to see him. That's another issue that I'm dealing with also. Another issue is my daughter's mom. She makes minimum wage. She don't want to get another job. She got comfortable with me paying all this money in child support. She done got cars and stuff like that. But now when I lose my job and she can't afford a car, now she want to go back and forth to court to try and see what the hell going on. The money is just not there. I just feel like, why do I have to continue? If my baby mama's got a $10 hour job and I got a $10 hour job, why they able to survive and have everything they got them want and I'm steady fucking homeless? That don't make no sense. So I just came up with the conclusion that my kids is taken care of. Even though I'm paying all this money, they're taken care of. And I just got to figure it out. I just got to keep being motivated, keep doing better, keep trying to better myself, keep trying to get better jobs. And one day it's going to pan out where I'm able to relax a little bit. Do you have any advice for any of the other men that could potentially be headed into this direction, getting into this vicious cycle? Is there any words that you can give them? Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, if the shit don't pan out, the woman got control of your life. She could destroy you or she could help you out. Well, I thank you so much for this interview. It has been wonderful. You have an amazing story that you can contribute that may help someone. It's not amazing for you, nonetheless. It's, it's a very deep story. Thank you again. Welcome. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Catch you next time. Make sure you choose Rocky Road Productions LLC Porsche Talk to feed your entertainment needs. And you can do that by following us on Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you like this video and share it with all your family and friends. Tag somebody in it, why don't you? And don't forget to comment down below and let us know how you feel. And before you leave, make sure you subscribe. That's right. You'll catch us every week. Looking forward to see you again next time. Bye.